Hey everyone, my name is Danilo Petrovic. I'm Ilya Marchenko. I'm Janis Kuda. I'm Evgeny Donsko. I'm Henry Laksan. I'm Peter Turepko and, and you're listening to the Game to Love podcast. Welcome back again, everybody. Here we are, and guess what time it is? It's ATP time because ATP tennis is back finally in 2021. This time, JG, how you, you almost said 2020. Almost. Oh, man, I know, almost, almost. It's going to be one of those transitional periods, isn't it? Where, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna have to just try and remember there's a one on the end. This Mate, time. I'm finding it hard at work, just like, um, obviously, with what we're doing, like posting journals and everything. I keep all every single time I put 20, I have to correct it. Yeah, uh, indeed. You can't be afforded to do that mistake as well, but I know it's all good. It's yeah, it is all good. It's all good that now we've got men's tennis back on the screens, and uh, yeah, this in well. Welcome, everybody, because this uh, podcast we're going to be talking about, obviously, the Antalya Open, which is in Turkey. And, uh, yeah, this is going to be our draw preview. Uh, quite excited about this one. Uh, normally, yeah, before, before you go on, though, Ben, I just want to say, shout out to everyone who's recently joined the group. I think we're up to 90 people Ooh, now. Nice. So that's pretty cool. Uh, if you've not joined and you want to join, it's entirely free. So feel free to do that. I'll put the link in the chat right now. So you can just click on there, you put your email address in, register for an account, and then you can easily join. Sounds good, mate. I'm, I'm pretty impressed. When we only started it up about two months ago, didn't we? And we've already got like 90 people in there. So that's pretty decent. Mate, I think we'll have 100 soon, not going to lie. Come on. If we can get to 100 by the end of, say, Antelope and Delray Beach, that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> Mele's already calling out for, where is the leaderboard? Is oh, that, the leaderboard. Yeah. Yeah, we forgot that. We yeah, forgot that. Well, it's not forgotten. It, trust me. It's one of these things which uh, needs to be added on, but uh, I've literally not had the spare time. I've only had spare time to just knock up these uh, backgrounds for the uh, podcast, and we're just uh, totally under the cosh just because it's the beginning of the month at work. So, yeah, don't worry. It will be updated, and we will get it on there for you guys because we do appreciate everything. Uh, yeah, everything that you contribute to the channel. Uh, so yeah, don't worry, guys. All your tips and donations—they're all been recorded. So we will we will update it for the net for I don't know, probably not the one later tonight, but obviously, hopefully for tomorrow or the next day, whenever we do one, we'll get it yeah, all yeah. sorted for sure. And wildlife saying there, wait, is JG out of the shed? Yeah, I'm out of the shed for now. It's a temporary fix. I'm having a few internet problems. So uh, yeah. we've got no internet out there for some reason. Uh, it's the upload speeds at one, whatever it is. So it's terrible. So I've come inside, bit of warm, nice beer. What can go wrong? Exactly right. Exactly right. We would rather be able to see your face moving around and your little expressions over there in the kitchen than have you uh, in the shed with the huskies. So... Uh, yeah, I think what we should probably do is probably crack on with uh, having a look. I know that the other draw took a little bit of time, didn't it? Uh, yesterday, obviously, the women's, they had so many uh, matches. There was about 32 matches or something ridiculous in their, their tournament. This one, probably not quite so many, but we're going to have a quick look at the qualifiers because uh, yeah. in this one, there's some quite interesting qualifiers that were coming through in this, uh, in this tournament. Uh, shall I bring it up so that everyone can yeah. have a little look? Right, so if I just add this one in here and then tell me if it's too small for you guys. Uh, That's good for me, to be honest, mate. I think it's um, it's okay. Uh, you could maybe uh, go a touch bigger. All right, I don't want to lose any of the things on the yeah, screen. Yeah, no, don't, don't, don't. Leave it right. like that. That's, that's good, mate, to be honest. <laughs> I'm being too right. bossy. But yeah, right. these are the qualifiers that happened today. For, the, for everyone who don't know, what's happening with the draw is you're going to have another qualification tomorrow. So that'll be the final qualification. And then they'll be put into the main draw. But also you've got the main draw starting tomorrow as well alongside it. Uh, so if you do want to put your predictions in, you have to do it tonight, really, to be safe. Yes, yes. So right. we're, we're not going to we're not going to know who the qualifiers are, but... It's a bit of a shame because there's some really good ones there. Obviously, Vavasori today, I expected him to go through. Uh, and the one I wanted to talk about, actually, was that Andrev. That Andrev-Lucas Klein match. I think that's that was an Ooh, epic one. I didn't, get, I didn't get a chance to watch it, but they're super players, both of them. 
Well, yeah, well, uh, he's uh, sort of a player who's been sneaking along, hasn't he, on the ITF scene, Andreev? Uh, yeah, the Bulgarian uh, guy. He's a. Uh, He's up. A, he's got quite a tough match coming up tomorrow, actually. As it goes, if you see there, look, he's a uh, quite a uh, quite a youngster on the tour. There, only nineteen years of age, and uh, he's been having a very good season at the end of back end of last year. He's well, get, up, get up some of his form. I know you had it there. I oh, think it's quite sorry. interesting to look at. So he's five hundredth in the world now. He's nineteen years old, and he went on a storming run last year. Um, and well, if the, without a pandemic, with more tournaments being played, hopefully this guy can really flourish because he's already shown in the past he can beat some good players. Obviously, there you've got, is it Martin? Rocker. What's it, Damas is a good player. Rocco Batala, brilliant. Yeah, Rocco Batala is a really good player, especially on the clay as well. So if you go down and look at that one, uh, he won this ITF there in Greece as well. Uh, Diaz Acosta, really good clay quarter player. In, in the, another guy we've spoken about, Leheka as well, and a good young Czech player that he's been. And he didn't even drop a set in that whole tournament. So Ryan Peniston there, obviously, good young British player. So yeah, he's he's very very uh, decent player this Andreev, and maybe one to watch out for. He's obviously a five hundred and sixty fourth in the world at the moment. It keep but, going down because there's a lot of green, mate. Look, he's, yeah. Yeah, I was a bit unfortunate there, lost in the final. Um, yeah. But he's a super player, and I think he's going to have a good future. Only nineteen years old, obviously. And at the end of the day, this is where the likes of say the Massetis, Alcarazes, they all come from the same route, and he seems to be following a similar pa similar pattern. Obviously, he's a bit older, but 19 is not really old, is it? So That's quite a good uh, one there, though. Uh, I know it's only an exhibition, but Sebastian Corder to go to a, a super tie break with him. That's pretty impressive. Yo, um, I remember, do you remember we watched that because it was in the back of, it was on the back of loads of wins. If you keep going down, there was a lot of wins before yes, this. Yeah, there was. Yeah, yeah look, I mean. <laughs> he didn't lose. <laughs> Dominic so he, Kuefer. Yeah, beat Dominic Kuefer. We know how well he did. And a lot of you guys, I know some of you were saying in the comment, they're quite impressed with our knowledge. If you don't know who this guy is, you should know because he's a super talent yeah. and he's actually won to yet today against Lucas Klein, who's another really good player. He is um, very good. So on I the back flick, of that, yeah, let's go back to it, mate. I'll flick back to that and then we can uh, have a look down. Yeah, Lucas Klein, very, very good player from Slovakia. Uh We'll have a quick look down. Uh, well, there's one of your your countrymen there. I expected him to go through. Vavasori, mate. He's a very, very good young Italian player. I think he's about 18 or 19 as well, isn't he? No, I think he's slightly older, is he not? I was in... I'm, uh, not so, I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure, but he's another good Italian player. He's got uh, very long locks. He might have uh, been growing them for a lot longer than what I think. Yeah. Oh, 25. All right. Apologies. Yeah. I think yeah, he's a lot older. I think it was Zepieri I'm thinking of. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, it's easier to get a mix up to each other. They're both um, <laughs> kicking around the same kind of level. Another Italian there, Pellegrino. You yeah. expected him to win. I didn't really yeah. see much of a threat from Aksu. Don't know who he is, to be honest. But then saying that, let's get straight on to the big one. Um, the big because for me, the one well. what stood out, Turka. Who yeah. is Turka? That's the question. <laughs> yeah, Turka exactly. in Turkey has gone on a mad one. Who is he? Well, uh, I had to do a bit of research on him. I've never heard of this guy before. His name's Mert Nasi Turka. And a uh, bit of an interesting name. You're playing in Turkey. You're a Turkish guy. And your surname's Turka. And uh, he's done super there. I mean, Kristen is a really good player. He's no he, was, he was the number one seed in the qualifiers. Like He was the <laughs> highest ranked qualifier, qualifier player. And he's just beaten him. What is it there? 6-2, 6-1. Yeah. Ridiculous. So watch out for Turka, anyone. Berrettini is probably at home quaking right now in the hotel room <laughs> in Turkey, thinking, I don't want to be facing against the Turka anytime soon. Well, exactly, mate. And uh, maybe it's the Christmas theme, just running into the new year. He's had his turkey. He's playing in Turkey. He's <laughs> Turka. And, uh, well, he just destroyed Kristen there. Two, two and one. I never saw that coming. As you can see, the bookies never saw it coming. He was a uh, 6.5 crazy so amazing though for him but he's probably getting cheered along if there's anyone there by his uh, home crowd yeah let's just go so. down we'll just let's get on to the actual draw in a minute yeah, i just yeah, want to talk about go. the last one really it was just uh the guy we've had on the podcast a bit disappointing for him i know he was saying he's yeah. gonna, we're expecting big McCund. things from him but mccund we did have him on the podcast if you've not checked out that interview uh go have a look it's quite an interesting one he's a nice guy uh, yep. A bit disappointing, really. Favourite, and he lost to uh, Helavara, the Finnish player. 
I'm not going to, I'm going to say I'm not that surprised, actually, to be honest. I don't know why, but that I've watched that Heliovara play a few times now, and he is a very powerful player. Uh, if, he, if he has one of those days where he's hitting everything in the court. He's more of a doubles player for me, mate. He's good at the doubles. I didn't yeah, really yeah, fancy yeah. his chances in the singles against McCun, but uh, it, it, it happens. Yeah, well... Uh, anyway, let's, let's get off the callers, mate, because I'm not sure... On, basically, Wild Live here saying he doesn't have a clue any of these are. <laughs> They're making me feel like I'm not a tennis fan at all. No, honestly, honestly, no hard feelings, guys. We're just a bit, a bit geeky, really, with the lower-ranked tennis. Oh, we love it, don't we? We absolutely love it. There's another one I want to give a quick shout out because look at that. That's probably the tie of the qualies. Merza Basic. Yeah. Uh, don't forget, he has an ATP uh, event win and under his belt. Uh, and uh, he went out to Kuzmanov, who played very well recently. Uh, I, can't, I forget which tournament it was in. It was the one in, oh, it was in Bulgaria, wasn't it? It was in Sofia, I believe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He actually had a very good show in there. So, uh, Mm, one to watch out for, possibly, if he gets himself into the main draw after the next one. But uh, Turka, he's up against Vabrensky next, so that's going to be a tough one for Turka. Come on, Turka, we'll cheer you on, mate. Come on. But let's move on to the real stuff. Let's move on to the real, the nitty-gritty, the main draw. And, uh, yeah. I'm you can say it a bit geeky. Well, very <laughs> geeky, I must admit. <laughs> yeah, and Ken Lee, like the, these challenger level players. <laughs> well, that's it. And this is their perfect opportunity to get in to face the big boys because there are some big boys in this tournament as well. And I'll just flick over to it now. There's the big one at the top there. The Italian stallion. It's Matteo Berrettini. Well, and he's up against a Turkish guy in the first round wild card there. Ergi Kirkin. It's an yeah. interesting name, isn't it? Yeah, no, I do know who I do know who he is, to be honest. Um, however, I'm going to go straight into it, man. I'm going to get mine up as well. I just don't see any way Berrettini's going to be losing. <laughs> and really? looking at the draw, it's very interesting, actually, because I actually like Berrettini's uh, route. He's got a nice route. Obviously, he's the number one seed, so you expect him to have a relatively no a good one. But if, if he's firing, his serve's firing, we know how powerful he can be behind his first serve. Yep. He is going to be really dangerous, and he's probably the favourite to win this whole tournament, in my opinion. Well, he has to be, doesn't he? I mean, uh, he's number 10 in the world. Uh, his last showing on hard court wasn't the best, was it? He, in Paris, he went out to Gironde, didn't he? And that was yeah. when he had the opportunity. But there was a bit of an injury going on there. He was injured. He wasn't really the same. Like He was just walking around. I don't know. He just didn't seem up for it. I think the season couldn't end quick enough, really, for Berrettini. And just uh, my hope is that he's had time to recover. Um, he is a good player. He is a good player. I do like him, to be fair. Uh, so we'll, we'll see what this season comes from. For me, so I've got him to win that one. I just want to, uh, just before we just skip over and don't give Ergi Kirkin his due in this match, I think we should because this guy is Turkish. He's playing in his home country. Uh, I just want to. Just make you aware of uh, who he is. He's number 446 in the world at the moment. I'm going to take away this uh, screen right now. I'm just going to share how he's been doing uh, in his recent matches, just so that we're all aware of uh, who Ergi Kirkin is. And if, as you can see here, Ergi Kirkin is on a bit of a run right now. What's this, exhibitions? I don't know, mate, but look at that. He is, well, he played Ilya Vajka and then got beaten in straight sets. But I don't know who any of these players are. Dembeck I've heard of, but Rosenkranz, not bad German yeah. player. Yeah, but uh, yeah, other than that, not too many. But confidence is a big factor in tennis. And if Berrettini nah. is not confident, what mate, do you reckon? I, I, it doesn't say, you're not selling anything to me, mate. It's loads of greens <laughs> against nobodies. Loads of greens against nobody. For me, right, Berrettini right. is elite. Doesn't do anything for me. I think he's going to wipe the floor of him, finish all him right. in two sets. All right. <laughs> I'm going to go with you as well. <laughs> so I just thought I'd throw that in there because I didn't realise he'd been in such good form, Ergie Kirkin. I quite like yeah. his name. I hope he does well. <laughs> it's got a very catchy name. Uh, we don't know who the qualifiers are yet. We've got Laszlo Gere. He was playing very well at the back end of last year, more so on the clay courts. Yeah. Uh, but, but I think it's difficult. We're going to be in the same situation today about the qualifiers, so I'm going to uh, discount them, unless there's any other player I'm not sure about. So for me, I'm going to go for Laszlo Gere. Yeah, yeah, I've got over. I just Moving don't know. down, Tristan Lamazine, uh, Jorissimov. 
It's yeah. got to be Jurisimov. Big yeah. fan of him. I think he had a good season last year at the end of it. He's very and, um, he's just the Lamazine's like the level below, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, he's sort of like a very good challenger player. So this is a big step up for uh, Lamazine, really, just getting into this uh, main draw of an ATP event. So as we move down, we're going to have uh, Salvatore Caruso, one of your favourites there, JG, and up against Alexander Bublik. Do you see an Mate, upset? And this is the first... Yeah, it is, it is an upset. I see this is the first time the seed's going to be going out in this tournament. It's going to be Bublik. I think the underarm serve's not going to be firing. Caruso's going to be on red-hot form, and we know how good he can be when he's playing well. So for yeah. me, I've got Caruso to win that one. Oh, you know how much I love the underarm serve. I can't go against Bublik. So Bublik's going through for me. So you'll go, that's where we're going to have our first clash. There we go. And then next up, well, this could be, well, we never know which uh, Fabio Fanini turns up, do we? Is this the injured Fabio Fanini? Is he well rested? Do we know what's going on with him right now? Uh, yeah, I think Fanini, he's had time to sort of recover from his injury. Uh, I think. It's hard to say, mate. I'd expect him against the qualifier to do quite well, um, but you never know. You do never know. And there are some very good qualifiers left in, uh, need I remind yeah. you. Yeah, no, I agree. It's a tricky one. It, it's hard to say because we don't know who it's going to be playing against. Yeah. Um, I'm going to just take the gamble that Fonini is going to be able to deal with him. Yeah, yeah. Next next match is, uh, I'm going to go with the same. Uh, hopefully, Fanini, the real one, turns up. So, with the next match is very interesting, though. We've got Chardy Albot. That's a real interesting one, isn't it? Can, I'd normally go for Chardy, but the way that Albot was playing at the back end of last year, I'm tempted by Albot now. He's sort of uh, changed my uh, opinion of him, really. So, yeah. that's why I'm uh, going to go with Albot on this one. Yeah, I disagree. I'm going to go for Chardy. I'm not an Albot fan. Um <laughs> <laughs> I've said it so many times on the podcast. It always comes back to bite me. And I remember Sardi when he was having that ridiculously good form. Um, did he almost beat Djokovic at one stage? I remember, I he forget what Medvedev. year it was. 2019, he beat Medvedev. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe 2019, yeah, I think it was. And he was exceptional. So I'm hoping he rekindles that this year. And Melez, uh, he's going, he's taking the uh, qualifier versus Fanini. Well, I do not blame you for that because you just never know. Uh, you just never know when it, which Fanini. So you're going Chardy. I'm going Albot. And uh, we're going to have a potential Fanini Albot there. Or oh, Fanini Chardy for me. And yeah, do this is want, really tough, mate. This is really tough. Bits? Do you want should we go through these bits? Just try and push these guys through the draw a little bit at the top first. Yeah, well, can we just do the one below quickly? Right, I've got, go on, I've got a go qualifier there. I'm going to go for Hugo Grenier. Yeah, yeah. I'm and then you've got another qualifier right, versus Struff, and I'm going to go for Struff. <laughs> These qualifiers. No, the reason is I'm actually backing Struff to go quite fast. So then I've got Struff Grenier, I've got Struff to beat Grenier, and then Shardy oh, really? Fanini. Yeah, I think Struff's going to beat Grenier, and I think the Fanini Shardy one, I'm not so sure. <laughs> I know you've got Albot. What was your thinking? What? What with Albot? Oh, sorry. Yeah. I didn't have it. Uh, I think that Albot could take out Fanini, to be honest, if it's not the real thing. If Fanini just struggles through and he's not at the top of his game and Albot's playing his game again, I reckon we could see Albot go through. Don't forget, I had that big shout where I called him to knock out uh, Shapovalov in, back in the yeah. last year. Did that uh, with style as well. Uh, this one, this one's tougher for me. Struff is the type of player who seems to just make it through about three rounds comfortably every time and then just go yeah. out to someone. So he usually gets shock of it, so doesn't he? He's unlucky. <laughs> That's never I think every year, like every tournament last year, he ended up coming up against uh, Novak Djokovic. Third round Djokovic and then just out. Oh, just to, And always in straight sets as well. No, actually, didn't he take a set of him in one of them, I think? Yeah, I think he did. Uh, but anyway... Let's move, or do you want to go through? Do we, we yeah, just we can do the top now, mate. Yeah, let's push so through, at the top, I've got Berrettini I've got, I'm going winning that minute. one. And then I've also got Struff beating Fanini. So we're going to see a Berrettini struff semi-final. No, I'm was going. it semi-final? Semi-final, yeah. Who did you go with Bublik or do you add Caruso Jurisimov? Who did you have there? Uh, sorry, Caruso Jurisimov. I had Jurisimov. Okay, so yeah, I thought you probably would do. I know that we we both uh, ride him hard. Him, uh, okay, there we go. Fanini Albot, uh, you would add Fanini Chardy. You go in with Chardy, do you sell Fanini? Fanini, Fanini to go through again, 
and Struff to go through. So I've got Albot and Struff. Yep. So what's your do your semi final? Because I've already got my top two semi final. So my semi finalists are Berrettini and Struff from the top side of the draw. I'm gonna go Albot again, mate. I know people are gonna start questioning my uh, sanity, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and Jerusalem of Berrettini is really tough as well. I'm just hoping the real Bennett, uh, blah, 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 the real Berrettini turns up. I'm gonna go Berrettini because I want to see him. Uh, I want to see the real Berrettini. So we we move on down. I'll just move that back a little bit for you guys. There we go. So, oh, we've got a big name here. Uh, we obviously spoke to Huesler recently, and he was saying about his epic match against Nikolas Basilashvili. Uh, boy, it was a really, really close match. He managed to finally win a set, which he hadn't done in, I think, 11 previous matches. So now he's finally won the set. Do you reckon he's now going to go on and win a match? Casper, what is oh, Arne, Arne the Boldy, mate? That's one of your yeah, favorite. I like Arne the Boldy as well, but <laughs> I'm going to be realistic. I think Basvili is going to beat him. He, wow. does have a, he does have a bit too much, but I know he's not won a match in however however long, but the last one against Wesley was a lot more encouraging. In fact, he shouldn't have lost that match. So No, he shouldn't um, have done. I so, think yeah, I've, only... got, I've got Basvili to win that one. So I think it's 11 matches uh, without a win. So if I've if I added another one on, uh, yeah, uh, Arne Baldy, he's two hundred and sixty-seven in the world. If anybody's not aware of who uh, Arne Baldy is, uh, yeah, Jackie's saying there, Ben, we questioned your sanity years ago. <laughs> yeah, Did Jackie, know you years ago. <laughs> oh, I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it, Jackie. <laughs> what sanity exactly, Mary Sky? Exactly right. Here we go. So uh, Arne Baldy, I can't see him. Beating, but uh, Bashash really has to be Arne Baldy for me. Come on, end the losing run. It's the new year, New Year's resolution. Bashash really goes through. The next so, one's tough because yeah. I like Selik back, and it's play. He's playing in Turkey as well. And then Kasper Zuk's one of them players. I think I included him when we was talking about if you had to buy any player. Yeah, like I if really you had like some him. money in shares and you wanted to buy stock in any tennis player, who would it be? <laughs> Kasper Zuk would be right up there because I think he's a young, really exciting player. So on that basis, I've picked him up before. I think it would be rude of me not to go for him. So I'll back Kasper Zuck, but then I'll have Bash Philly to beat him. Well, you'll be right to back uh, Kasper Zuck as well. There's something I well, I want to bring this up as well, if, we, if I can. So I'm yeah. just going to deviate away from the main screen again, just for a second, just because I just think it's worth just showing you guys uh, what's been going on with Kasper Zuck, because we've, we've been talking about him a lot, and we think he's a very promising young player. So, uh, where is it? There we go. Here we go. So, this is his recent form, and you see some of the players that he's beaten in here. Nuno Borges, really good Portuguese young player. Uh, Jesper de Jong, who we've had on the podcast. Michael Gertz, another great player we've had on the podcast. Hey, even Seng. You missed out Seng, but he's a quality Seng, player. Yeah, Seng's very good player. Oh, Tai P. And then uh, Matasevich as well. Yeah, twice. That's pretty impressive. Molkan, he's a very good challenger player as well. So th th he's looking really good at the moment. He's on a storming run. Like, look, all on hard court as well. So, yeah. What do you reckon on that? I think that's just made yeah, my mind. Zook, I think, yeah, Zook's a good player. I think he's going to be all right. And he had a good form last year. Uh, exciting young player. So that's why, it's, like I said, I've got Zook. But then I've, I see him going out in the next one to Bashville. Um I'm gonna throw uh, something Not crazy. Sure, I'm I, gonna I go. go for Zook as well. I'm gonna go with Zuck against Bastiasvili. Come on, let's have that run continue. I love seeing a long winning streak. We saw. Yeah, the I'll, I'll back that as well, then. I'll back it. You've convinced me as well. Go on, the Zuck. We like the Zuck. Go on, Casper. And now but this is the only instance where I'm gonna pick a qualifier. Ooh. Marcel Inham for me is a wild card. Technically, he's not the greatest tennis player in the world. Um, so I'm going to take a gamble and really? say one of the qualifiers he went through, they must have won two games in a row, so they can't be terrible. And I think if it's Turka, Turka's going to take Ilhan. <laughs> oh, mate, Turka would love an all-Turkish affair, I'm sure. That's a, he's born and bred for to play the Turks, I think, and to uh, knock them out. But, well, it's difficult. I don't really know much about Ilhan, to be honest. <sighs> I think I'm going to go with you, to be honest. If anyone, if there's a qualifier going to win, I, I quite like a lot of the qualifiers. So 
It's this is one of the tournaments you might see me. If it's a Bavasora, you'd fancy him against Ilham, wouldn't you? So yeah, if it's Andrea, I've mate, I'd probably fancy him against Ilham. But yeah, we'll move next down. one's really good. Malik Jaziri, uh, Dimonor. But I don't think I'm going to talk. I agree. I'm going to do what you did. Dimonor <laughs> done. And then I'm going to have Dimonor to win that one. <laughs> And then I'm going to have Dimonor to beat Zuck as well. So Dimonor's going yeah. quite a distance for me. Oh, you yeah, got the same. same. I'm just literally doing the same. I'm just following along because, you know, I love Dimonor. I was uh, really uh, uh, riding him. Yeah, uh, and let us know in the comments, after. guys. How far do you think Dimonor can go this tournament? Because this is a really good uh, opportunity for someone like an Alex Dimonor to advance and win an ATP 250. He's certainly got the game. Yeah, he got uh, to the final, didn't he? Against uh, what was his what's his name? Umber. Umber, um, yeah. Close, but not close enough. Uh, but he can do it. I think he can do it. And, and he loves the beginning of the year. I don't remember the beginning of the last year in the ATP Cup. He looked uh, amazing. Probably the best player for me. Well, obviously he's not the best player, but for me, the most standout player that I wasn't expecting to be as good as he was. So. <laughs> Next one, this one's quite actually tougher than you think. I'm actually torn between the two on this one. I don't know why. I think well, I gonna... so, I mean, I've got Travaglia. I've put Travaglia down. Really? Yeah. I, just, I just don't know. I just, I'm going to go with Kekmanovic just because I think he won his first mm -hmm. ATP event last year. And hopefully there's just going to be like a bit more drive to, to win a bit more this year. So I'm going with Kekmanovic. And just one moment there, Jackie, they're saying, I've got the demon to go all the way and win this. Wow. Not a bad pick. We like that, Jackie. Bold choices. That's what we really like. I mean, I haven't, this is the, the first time I'm going through it myself. So you're witnessing me go through it for the first time. The next matchup is probably my tie of the first round, to be honest. Yuri Vesely versus Emil Rusevori. Hmm. Wow, I love this match. Uh, I'm actually a bit torn on this one as well. Even though I love Rusevori and I'm still going to pick Rusevori, I think Vesely could upset him. I can't go against Rusevori though. It's a 50 50 match, I agree. But I'm going to go Rusevori just for my heart. Uh, and then I've got Rusevori also to win the next match as I'm well. I'm going for it as well. I think I, we're, we're terrible though because we're, we're going with our hearts rather than our heads on this. And he could quite even well. Don't forget in the other ATP event, I don't think he even made it through one of the qualifiers. I think he went out to Cam Nor or the first round he lost to Cam Norrie, didn't he? Just went straight out. But that's what I mean. He's very good, but he's not quite at the elite level yet. So another interesting one here. Is this another one? Am I I'm, I think I'm gonna go for another qualifier here. Or am I? I don't know. Qualifier, Nicola Nicola Kern there, which is a German uh player. I'm, I don't know much about Kern, to be honest. I'm, I'm gonna yeah, he's okay, but I'm going for the qualifier as well. I agree. I don't think he's that. doesn't blow me away. Uh, and then the bottom one is a real toss-up. Yeah. I actually put Herbert, but I'm kind of changing my mind because we don't know. We don't know, basically. Goffan should be able to beat Herbert. Yeah, it all yeah. depends. Is Goffan going to turn up and play better tennis this year or not? I'm right. not sure what caused him to play so bad last year, but... He's definitely got the ability to be able to breeze past someone like a Herbert. He's a quality, quality tennis player. Okay. So it's, we don't know what's going to happen, but I'm just going to hope with the fact that Goffan's going to be back uh, and I'm going to go with Goffan. Oh, but I'm so not that convinced. So you said you went with Herbert? I did. <laughs> originally, no, I originally did, but I've, just, I've changed it. I think Goffan's going to do it. Well, don't forget, Goffan currently, Goffan currently on a five-match losing streak. So he'll be wanting to see the end of that. Uh, he has all the ability. I mean, he beat people like Krajinovic in straight sets in the US Open. Uh, beat Opelka, obviously, as well. Uh, beat Borna Choric as well. Uh, that was in Cincinnati. Just wanted to see him back at that form. Come on. I'm back back in the golf. Come on, the golf. He's going through and he's going to go through again. And then yeah. we get the real interesting. If this match happens, God, I can't <laughs> wait. So, Rusevori, uh David Goffin, what do you think? Yeah, is that your semi-final? I don't think it's a semi. I think that's a quarters. Okay, yeah. sorry, quarter-final, yeah. So, yeah, I've got the same outcome and I've got Rusevori to beat him. I'm going to go... I'm going to go Goffin. 
I'm just going to say, if, if this, this is the real da- David Goffin, then... Mate, it's the oh, question. Yeah. Wild Live sums it up perfectly. What ga- Goffin will we see this year? <laughs> well, this is the thing, and I'm like really torn because I could be completely shooting myself in the foot because if he loses in the first round and I push him all the way to the final or something ridiculous like that, then I'm absolutely screwed and my bracket's destroyed just by David Goffin. So, oh God, this is a tough one. This could go really bad. I'm going to stick with Goffin. Come on. Just have confidence in the lad. He's been at the top of the game for a long time. He's going to come back. He's well rested now. He's coming back. He's going to be the old Goffin. Yeah. Right. Not? So now we have the semi finals for me. I've got Alex Dimonor, Rusevori. Yeah, come first. All right. So, yeah. Do it. And then the top one, Berrettini, Jan Leonard Straff. Um, sorry, mate. I can't see your screen. So I don't know where you. Oh, yeah. So let's start with the top one first. I'm going to go Berrettini. To advance Sorry. to a final, and at the bottom, I'm going to have Alex Dimonor to advance. Yeah, it's a real tough one. This one, uh, I, 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 hasten, I hasten to agree with you. Oh, it's just one of those ones. I love Alex Dimonor, even if I think Goffin's coming back. I don't. I still think Alex Dimonor is just a rising star, and I think that he just has all the ability to go get to more finals this year. So this could be a very good start to the year for him, but it's going to be him versus Berrettini in the final. We both have the same final. Who do we have winning it, though? I'll let you go first. Right, well, I'll bring it out a little bit. We're never going to be able to see both the players unless they go all the way out, are we? Yeah, that's fine. Are you sure? Okay. Right, so the final, I'm going to go with... Matteo Berrettini is going to win the tournament. And it's a bit of a safe one, but I just think if it's the real Berrettini back again, I don't. I think he's too powerful for Alex de Menor. And we've seen how power affected Alex de Menor last year. Um, Ugo Umber blasted him off the court. And uh, I think Berrettini's got even more power than him. Yeah, so, no, mate, I, I agree completely. I've got the exact same outcome. Uh, Berrettini to beat Alex de Menor. So we'll see how that goes. It's a big ask. So, like I said, let's go through our dark horses now. Who we have our dark horses for the tournament. I'm pretty sure you better work it out based on what you've already got. But for those who don't already know, my main pick to win the event is Matteo Berrettini. And yes. then my dark horse is going to be Rusevori. <laughs> I knew you were going to say Rusevori. That was going to be my pick. But I'm going to have to Bruce go. Rusevori could go all the way and win this tournament, no doubt. Um, He's got the ability. I think his draw's a bit tough, though, because if you look at it, he's got Kazmanovic Travaglia, yeah. potentially. He's starting already off with Vesely. It's pretty. It's a pretty tough one. Then he's on the side with Goffin as well. And then Dimonor, if he gets to the semis. So he's got a really tough draw, but to win a tournament, you've always got to beat the best. Yeah. Uh, and that, so it's, going think, to be, it's going to be pretty tricky. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Uh, I'm not going to go with Rusevori. It has to be an unseeded player as well for your uh, wild card. And I'm going to go with uh, Igor Jurisimov. Uh, oh, nice. I, th- I yeah. think that with his Good route, one. if he's able to knock out Berrettini, I think he could take out Albot. I think he could uh, get to get himself to the final. Yeah, that's uh, a good pick, mate. And just go through some of the comments there. We've got uh, Betty Stolk, I believe. Uh, she's saying, do you hope Goffan will have more confidence this tournament with his friend, new coach? So uh, he's got a new coach this year. I didn't know about that. So in theory... The new coach, new year, new golf fan. He's only 30 years old. Uh, I know. Yeah, come on. I think it was. I forget who reminded me. Someone said he's wild live. He's only 30. He's not going to fall off a cliff right now, is he? Surely no. not. Most, well, most sports people, they're coming towards their peak of their career when they're getting uh, around the late 20s, around the 30. Uh, you've got all of the experience. You've got still got the movement. You've still, you're not slowed down that much, but you've, yeah, you just got, there's a lot to your game when you're that age. And, I think that if he just gets it back together again, you'd see him easily. He can easily get into the finals of ATP events once more this year. Yeah, that's, that's what I believe anyway. No, no, I think I agree, mate. And Domenico there saying, obviously an Italian fan, Berrettini will win his fourth tournament. Yeah, we've both gone for it. We both think Berrettini can do it. Yeah. Um, I know some people were saying earlier it's a bit of a challenger-style draw. I don't, I'm not so sure. I think it's a bit harsh. There's some really good, exciting players in this draw. Obviously, you're not, it's not all the top players, not many top tens or really ex- loads of top talent. But regardless, it's a good tournament. 
Uh, it's an ATP 250, remember? And I think we're going to see some good level tenders here. Yeah. It might be a bit slow because obviously the nature of tennis is re- uh, starting again. But I still think it's going to be quite exciting and a nice one. Yeah, and just remember, guys, these are the well, are going to be all these challenger players that are potentially coming through. These are going to be the potential new superstars for the future that you might be following in the ATP 500s in future master events. Uh, you just, these are the ones I know it seems a little bit like, oh, no, it's full of like players that we've not heard of. Trust me, they're going to be some household names coming. Uh, coming like Andrew, that Andrew guy, honestly, is really good. I don't want to big him up too much. He's 560 in the world now, but he can really fly. <laughs> he won't qualify now. <laughs> don't, don't say his name. But regardless, but every, the GTL curse would be rife otherwise. I know. Uh, did you want to... Uh, I, well, I know that we've gone through this draw already. Thanks to Thomas Rock there. Uh, uh, I missed all but the dark horse. You're gonna to have to go and rewind them, mate, and then uh, just. Uh... No, come on. We'll let Thomas Rocks know. We'll let him know. My dark horse was Rusevori, and no, Ben's was. He's in the dark horse. He missed all, all of oh, them. Oh, he missed all but the dark horse. The main <laughs> yeah. picks were both Berrettini. We both got Berrettini to win. Ben copied me. Ah, yeah, that's it. Well, I'm not allowed to pick an Italian just because JG has his Italian roots. That's why. But I'm gonna go with it in this one. So uh, I was going to say, did you want to have a look to see how people got on uh, with the WTA one, which uh, obviously uh, was going on during today? We obviously, uh, I think the bracket ended around 6 a.m., like the cutoff. So it wasn't long to actually get yourself involved in this one, which is a bit frustrating for a few people. We had a few people in the chat. Sorry, what was that, mate? What did you say? The WTA one, there was a few people in the chat just saying, uh, or in the comments. Uh... Who yeah, no. I missed it. So, yeah, just want to quickly before you go on to that bed, just talk about this tournament a sec. Um, sure. I was there's a bit of a question about what surface is being played on. I've not watched any of the qualifiers, but I'm pretty sure it's on hard this year. Previously, it's always been on grass, if I'm not mistaken. But um, as it's far as hard, this one, yeah, it's always been grass though. It's, until there's always been a grass tournament uh, for as long as I remember. I remember the other year, few years, it's always been grass. But it seems to be that they're on hard court this year. Yeah, they are. I'm unsure why that is, but that's just the, that's just the way it is right now. Who knows? Maybe uh, it's something to do with where they've had to uh, play the tournament. Maybe it's safer surroundings. You don't know. In this day and age, I'm not surprised about anything, to be honest. So the fact that we just got some tennis on and uh, we're all able to watch it and we're all able to get excited about it and we're all able to come on here and uh, have a chat about it. Which is Yeah, so uh, we've got Betty, Betty there clarifying. Thanks for that. It is hardcore and the ITF's on clay. Nice no, one. There you go, mate. See, that's what I mean. That you're showing uh, your ITF uh, roots there, <laughs> watching too many ITFs. So I was going to say, if we have a little look, uh, just from yesterday's uh, women's one, shall we? Oh, so I was just uh, sizing it up so that we could have a a look on there. Let's have, oh, a, little, nice. let's have a little look on there. So. So let's see how everyone's getting on. At the top, we've got Lithuania. And there's oh, Betty yeah. there. Knows her WTA very well, clearly. <laughs> ten, 10 picks so far. Correct ones. Wow, Lithuania's always up there. Yeah. That's crazy. Mary Sky up the top there as well so far. Uh, doing well. Vamos Rafa 8 up there. Kyle um, 95. I'm Chris Hansen. Take a seat. <laughs> I like this name. <laughs> So that's good. Big Al there. Chuck it. There's a lot of people on eight uh, correct selections there, isn't there? There's Jack. Jack. And there's JJ. And there's me. Look, we're all level there, mate. <laughs> me, you, and Jax. I've not even looked at this, to be fair. I didn't even know. That's not too yeah. bad. It's a lot of people on seven. Oh, I just get the full set. There's Harry there. Carrillo. Obviously, AKA Thomas Rock. Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> I always forget that this is the name. I obviously know my tennis. Whoa, look at that. Pushing up into the higher ranks this year. He's not just at the foot of the table. He's right there uh, in 21st, which is one above the bottom. (laughs) But it's still still doing all right. Uh, Come on, Melez. It's a new year now. Come on, Melez. What are you up up to down there, Melez? Come on. Don't worry. Someone give him a leg up. Come on. Get him up in the uh, top half. So it's going to be... Interesting to Mary see. Mary Sky saying, I don't know anything about the WTA. Well, you're doing very well. You're fooling us. You're in third right now. But I will, I will also add, it doesn't mean anything. Right yeah. now, as long as, if you predict the final or the winner, there's a good chance you'll probably end up winning anyway. 
So who's Mary Sky got all the way to win? Well, let's have a look. Well, you can see there, that was the big upset there. Probably a lot of people got long, uh, got wrong. We got it wrong, which is Laura Sigmund. Not yeah. Now. She went out. Uh, she brought it back, though, didn't she? She brought it back to 4 all. Yeah, she, I had Trevor Sand going a bit further. That's a bit disappointing. Uh, she's got Ken in. Uh, Brady. Got Brady going all the way. Oh, popular choice, uh, Jim Brady. Oh, got the... Uh, you're siding with JG on a lot of these selections here, uh, Mary Sky. Go on, Mary. Mary. Well, she's doing a lot better than me. So she, <laughs> must have, <laughs> she must have changed a few good ones. Yeah, exactly. Cry, uh, cried your cover there. Uh, yeah, went through, which is really good. Uh, well, yeah, we don't want to talk too much about the women's because we will just do a, a quick roundup on a podcast that we'll probably do later in the week. We'll go through some results. But we've yeah. obviously got... Uh, the next draw preview, which is coming up very shortly. Uh, hopefully, all of you lot are going to come and join us for that one. It's the Delray Beach uh, draw preview coming up next. Uh, we'll probably have a small break, won't we? Give us yep. like 15, 20 minutes, and then we'll be back with you for, uh, for the next one. Yeah, so stay tuned for that. Thanks, everyone, for uh, joining us on this podcast. If you've not already, like the video. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe. If you want to join the league, I'll put the link in there one more time. Uh, just join. That'll be good. You can join, compete against us. We've got a few people now. I think it's like 90 people, so that's good. That's pretty good. Yeah, I'm really impressed. Uh, and don't forget, we're going to have to do some sort of uh, prizes at some point for some of these, or we're going to have to select one uh, big tournament that we're going to start doing some some of these for. Yeah, we'll do some maybe for slams or whatever, but we can't do it right now. No. But anyway, yeah. Thanks everyone got for for um for today and we'll see you soon. We'll do guys. See you very soon.